noise. I've realized something, my office, I'm, so we're in this, I've decided I'm gonna call this place an apartment now, not a flat, yeah? Because I, I feel like it's a little bit, you know, upmarket. I don't know if there's any difference between the word apartment and flat. I'm calling it an apartment now. Anyway, in this apartment, we, um, we've got by far the biggest wow. one. It's at the top. We've got the roof terrace and our apartment covers two or three apartments. So our, our one is- And you've got, you've got a beautiful view over Portsmouth as well, haven't you? Why, why are you <laughs> laughing at that? <laughs> no reason, mate. I'm just in a good mood. Carry on. <laughs> yes, we've got a beautiful view of the Spinnaker Tower and I've got the sea right there. I, I reckon if I've got a javelin, I could launch it in it. Anyway. Point being is ours spans two or three other flats. So ours is considerably larger and I've got an office. And I think my office is above their bedroom. Because when I first moved in, I heard lots of giggling and stuff during the day uh, when I was in my office. And now, mm. whenever it comes to podcast time, it's dead silence. Like, they must be able to hear me. And they just like we can't go in the bedroom between four and five now because all we can hear is that silly cunt upstairs shouting. So who have you got living downstairs then? A young couple or something? Yeah, young couple. Not not a couple of blokes or anything, gay blokes, you know. No, no, no. I, I, I you, don't hear the, to... you don't hear the squelching of meat and shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no no hide the sausage going on. But if there was, yeah, I'd have no problem with that. Um, no, I, I'll tell you a funny story about shagging. I, I, I think they're the ones that called the police on me, John. I think they got so fed up with me doing the podcast, they heard one little bit of noise <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night and called the fucking police on us because they're so fed up listening to me. A few years ago, Sarah and I went to, there's a town called Bantry, right down on the peninsula. Beautiful place. And there's a fairly high-end country house there called Rolfs. Well, I can't, no, the, the country house is called Something Something Country House, and the restaurant is called Rolfs. Fucking superb food. Um, so we stayed there. And for some reason, there was only us, me and Sarah, and another couple staying in the entire place. Now, I don't know why this was. And for some reason, they put us in rooms next to each other. So we're there and we got on the Saturday afternoon and Sarah and I are cracking on a little bit. But this couple were probably in their late 20s. And Sarah wasn't feeling very well. So she laid down with a, she had a bit of a cold. So she laid down for a bit. And I was just lying on the bed reading. And we heard this couple shagging next to us. And it was fucking hilarious because, I mean, my head was like by the wall with the headboard. And then obviously the bed in the other room was butted up against our side. This bloke's head was probably no more than three feet from mine. He was <laughs> in this fucking bird. Hey, oh, fuck my life. So bearing in mind, we were the only four people in the hotel. So that evening, we got down to the restaurant. There was me and Sarah. Um, there were a couple, there were a few other couples in there, old couples who'd just come in for, for food. They didn't, they weren't staying. And of course, this young couple get escorted down, but were escorted to their table. They clocked me and Sarah and they've seen us in the corridor. They realise in one horrible moment, they knew what I was grinning at. And the fucking girl, she was bright red and the guy didn't know where to look at anything. And of course, they're in our full view for the whole meal. They didn't last very long. I didn't stay very long. I must have been so embarrassed because we were sitting there thinking, I know, we know what you were doing. And of course, Sarah and I don't give a shit about anything like that, but these people clearly did. And I started making references to fucking hiding the sausage at dinner time and things, you know, as you do. <laughs> Excuse me, have you got happy. any toad in the hole? <laughs> yeah, toad in the hole, I'd like to hide my sausage. Oh. <laughs> any cream pie? <laughs> got a cream pie. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I, 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 I think it was... Go oh. I was going to say, I need, I need to clarify something because I sounded like a massive cunt a minute ago. It was relevant, me saying there's two or three different flats below us because we were like, which one could it be that called the police? We're not sure. And I was like, I think it's the one below my office because they used to be really noisy <laughs> below my office with giggles and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd never hear them anymore. So yeah, I, I wasn't just saying there's two or three below us for no reason. It was relevant to the story. 
But what you could do is you could ring the police on them, right? And you could say there's a bloke downstairs with an underage girl. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> an anonymous tip. Yeah. <laughs> Misses. <laughs> there's a weird taboo. But anyway. Sex, isn't there? Yeah, it's huge. I don't know why. I don't know. I, get it. I mean, huge. There's a huge taboo about sex and nudity, particularly. Mm, very strange. Um, I just don't get it. I really don't. I mean, um, it's, it's like we said before, a few episodes back, we're talking about these fucking very creepy men who have an unhealthy obsession with their younger daughters, much younger daughters' sex lives. Mm. And get, you know, in, in the States, there's a fucking bunch of Christian wankers who get their daughters to exchange purity rings with their fathers. And what the fuck is going on there? That is just fucking creepy as hell. Why are you interested in your daughter's vagina? <laughs> really? There's, there's something wrong. It's not like she's a baby and you're interested because you want to keep it clean and healthy. Oh. You know, it's not like you're cleaning shit out of it. This is a, a young woman who's an adult. And you are interested in what she's doing sexually. Not to the point of wanting to be, her be safe, but you're interested to the point of you seem to think you have some fucking say in, in and control of it. You are fucking perverse, sir. Mm. There's Honestly, a, it's fucking there's a couple, creepy as hell. There's a couple of celebrities that I uh, can't remember their names. One's a singer and one's a rapper, I believe. And uh, they, they got exposed for taking their under, I can't remember the age of their children, but they were both under 16, uh, to one of those gynecologists to check if their hymen was intact. Jesus Well, that's not gonna fuck up a young girl, is it? <laughs> I know, how crazy is that? I mean, never mind the intrusiveness of it. And never mind that the gynecologist should not be doing it. It's a gross mm. invasion of privacy. He's not giving, I'm sure, properly for certainly coercion going on. But what the fuck is wrong with the fucking parents, man? Seriously. It's Jeez. awful. Anyway. Oh, you're back. I'm back. What was you're the last back. thing I said? Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> today is the day. Today is the day we hear about the long overdue death, in some people's opinions, of Prince Philip. I've had so many fucking memes in my WhatsApp channels. It's unreal. <laughs> the funniest one is... I is a screenshot of someone's Tinder profile with Elizabeth um, imposed on it, saying sexy and single and ready to swing. Which I thought was most disrespectful, but fucking hilarious. <laughs> kind of puts your queen shitting on the toilet to, into shame, doesn't it, really? Oh, my God. That's a story I'll never forget, even when I'm an old man. And that was hilarious, that one. Death I remember thinking with my head in my hands, thinking, Connor, what have you done? <laughs> you're going to get my business partner, you're going to get yourself killed now. <laughs> <laughs> fucking funny, though. But oh, all oh mouth, absolutely. All fucking mouth, not, not one cunt turned up. Yeah, that my address was listed. Yeah, if they wanted it, I'd have stabbed the fucker. Well, the thing is, what is wrong, again, what is wrong with people? They, they're threatening, threatening to get violent because you post something they don't like about a woman that we respect for no fucking good reason. She was born into the lucky fucking sperm club. And I didn't even say anything offensive, I didn't think. I said you the didn't say anything offensive. No, you just posted a really offensive picture. Is that an offensive picture, though? I, I was, obviously to them, it wasn't to me, no. I don't even know being offended with <laughs> feel like, but they, <laughs> they found it, though. The funniest one I've seen so far it's a very recent picture of Prince Philip and the Queen standing next to her, and he looks fucking terrible. And the caption is, the last official photograph of Prince Philip taken shortly after his death. Because he looks that bad. 
Like there was that photo that went around of him in a, a back seat of his chauffeur driven car. And he, he looked, he, he, he looked like if a sperm had somehow managed to escape a sock, get into the <laughs> sewers, grew up in the sewers, and then became a prince, well, a duke somehow. Yeah. Extraordinary, isn't it? He's the Queen's consort, wasn't he? Wasn't that as described? Uh, I, no, Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, no, anyway. Duke anyway, Edinburgh. RIP. I don't know anything about the bloke, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but oh, RIP. yeah. Just a, a, a normal, everyday, um, inbred racist parasite that now we're free of. I've got Is no it? love for the royal family at all. I mean, they're, they're, I don't really concern myself over them, but what I find almost sickening is this outpouring of grief when one of them pops their clothes. He was 99 fucking years old and had one of the most privileged lives and backgrounds you could possibly imagine for no other good reason that he was born lucky. For fuck's sake. Was he it's not like he was some kind of lucky. warrior. I don't know. We really yeah. should be talking about this. We've got no fucking clue, have we? <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> Honestly, I know nothing about Prince Duke Philip. I don't even know what his title is. Anyway, the fellas died. He's had a yeah. wonderful life. Fair fucking play to the yeah. cunt. I'm sure he died happy. His title is now dead. His title is or now the deceased. Late. <laughs> the late. The late. The late. <laughs> anyway. Now, some people will say he'll be up in heaven looking down on us, but no, he's not. He's just dead. The wave function has a well and should collapse on that one. So, anyway, people will be listening to this on Monday. I wonder if we'll get death threats after this podcast. I do hope so. Maybe, probably. Um, anyway, after the, the, the... We're recording this on Friday. People won't be listening to it till Monday, so in some respects, it's going to be old news. And I'd have probably seen it in our daily emails and things. But after the conversation we had last night with you guys, I came to the conclusion, um, and, and this is something we've seen over the years many times, but someone kind of went through this one again last night. Why astronauts remind me of trainee, sorry, why tradesmen remind me of trainee astronauts? Um, because you might not realise this, but when I was a kid, I either wanted to be a vet or an astronaut. So I became a marketing guy. Obviously. That's what you do. Obviously. Well, I used to be a computer programmer, but then I ended up doing this by some bloke stole my wife. So it was either stay, keep the job or set up a business on my own. So the job lasted about three seconds and I started my own business and here I am. Anyway, tradesmen, I like training astronauts. And why do I say that? Because one of the parts of astronaut training, certainly in, in the initial Apollo, well, I guess it's still it's because you've still got the, the high G takeoffs launches. They put them in these fucking great big whirling centrifuges <laughs> to accustom them to very high G forces. Now, there's only a certain amount of acclimatization you can do because you get to a certain G-force when the blood rolls, come, literally falls out of your head and you just pass out and oxygen. Now there are G-suits that you can wear, which compress your body to keep the blood in your head. And that's effectively what they do. That's the premise field. But you can acclimatize to it somewhat. And that's what they do. They want to know if you're going to faint early, want to know what your limits are, if things break, et cetera, et cetera. So they put them in this centrifuge. And of course, once you're in a centrifuge and you're going at about 3G, yeah, there's not a lot you can do. You're stuck there. And if, if you keep going, you will die. And you get to a point when you can't even, say, move your thumb or your finger enough to turn the thing off. At which point you're stuck in this revolving thing, like a fucking washing machine going round, you know? And the only way to get out of it is for someone to break the cycle for you. Now, you might be thinking, I mean, you know where I'm going with this, I guess, but the, the listeners might be thinking, John, what the fuck are you on? Are you drunk again? <laughs> well, I'm not, no. But the fact remains, the guys we spoke to last night, one in particular, 
Um, no, I won't identify him because we just don't do that. But you know, no disgrace to him because he's just one among thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands. And he's like, he owns a business, he's got a great reputation, um, does a great job. He's correctly identified it's pointless and counterproductive to, to work with and, and court cheap buyers. So he only sells to people with a will and the wherewithal and the, the sheer care and desire to pay his highest prices, et cetera, et cetera. The problem he's got now, though, is he hasn't got, he can't get enough decent stuff. Now, there's ways we can help him fix that as well, but that's by the by. Um, but his real problem is he's so busy, he now has to go on the tools when he wasn't before. And he knows, he knows he shouldn't be on the tools. He knows that, say, in installing a boiler for a couple hundred quid, a boiler for a couple hundred quid, is a gross misuse of his time because he could be in the office doing important shit to make 10 times that with a decent strategy, tactic, or whatever. That's just how it works, you know. He's talking about the difference between being on the tools, where he should not be, and being in the captain's chair, as we call it, where you are directing the operation, telling your first officer to make things so, and lo and behold, things happen. That's the correct job for a proper business owner. I mean, you might like, you might like working on the tools, fair dues. I like my writing, that's why I do it. It's therapeutic, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we have a very clear view of what we do and we don't do the menial stuff that other people can do that we could do if we wanted to, but we don't do it. You know, if we do something, we do it because we can do it better than anyone else. And it's, it's value driven. So this guy is doing jobs which are beneath his abilities and are certainly is not best use of his time. And his reason for, for really not well, he's really for being very resistant to joining us in the Foundation's Mastermind. And I blame myself for this, for not explaining adequately how we could help him, to be fair. His reason was, I don't have time to commit to it. He's in the centrifuge, can't break it. He's stuck against that wall. He needs someone to break it, but he's, he's almost like shouting through the window, don't turn it off! <laughs> you know? We can't help, we can't break the cycle for people unless they ask us to. And the way we do it is, you know, it's, it is uncomfortable. Because he would have to, I mean, the, for instance, and I don't mind telling, telling it, or told him last night, I think, but certainly saying this for everyone to hear. You know, if you are too busy, no matter how premium priced you are, if you are too busy, you're not charging enough. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I, if I was in his position, and I'd be thinking, okay, I need to get off the tools. What do I do? Well, okay, I just keep putting the prices up until we've only got just enough work again. Do you know how much fucking more money we'll be making? You know, so much more. If you've got 10 guys on the tools, but you need 15 of your current workload, just increase your prices. So five of those 10 drop off the, the, you know, the, the demand. So your demand pretty much exactly matches it, matches your ability to supply. That, 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 it makes no sense to do it any other way. And because of the margins and things, you don't know what his margins were, but you, that'd be pretty high for anything like the other guy we work with. You know, he could be going for the sake of argument from say a 25%, 30% margin to a 50% one until people start dropping off. I don't know. What I do know is his profits will massively and disproportionately increase. It won't matter that he's losing those five jobs. Fact thing is, he's not, he's losing those fucking five jobs anyway because he can't do them. Mm -hmm. And he's missing out on all the other cool shit he can do because he's on the tools. I imagine if he, if he didn't do that, imagine if he, he did get off the tools, if he paid us a relatively tiny amount of money to come on board with us. And, and took that leap of faith and, and didn't work on the tools, lost some work, but then massively increased his profitability because of what he did with us. It just makes no sense. But like I said, I, I blame myself for not not explain, explaining, explaining it adequately. Yeah, you're, pr you're pretty much a shit cunt, mate. This is true. I will not deny that. I mean, I, I wear that that bad shit cunt the cook <laughs> with a badge of, with, with pride. You know? As you should. Shit cunt There's pride. There is no one cuntier to wear it. Well, yeah, it's 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 really frustrating because I mean, I'm using him as an example from last night because that's top of consciousness. But I've heard it so many times over the years. It's the point it's a fucking cliche. You'd think I'd have learned to, to explain things adequately by now, but I I just don't get it. How can you be so myopic as to see that? The only way to stop being busy in the long term is to force the issue and not be busy in the short term, to take that breath to, sh to sharpen your axe, so to speak. 
because people like to believe there's a magic pill and there's a something. Well, can... I guess in some senses there are raising your fucking prices. In some sense, well, that's scary. Yeah. They want a painless magic pill that has they shut their eyes, go la 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 glug, 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 glug. Oh better. Now I've opened my eyes. No, I think it's more complex than that. I really do. Is that that would be someone shit. who's who's that would be someone who's in denial and, and maybe maybe not particularly bright. But the guy last night, he wasn't stupid by any means. I mean he's he's no, built he a superb business. I mean, he's of my age group. He's built a superb business. He's been premium selling for at least 18 years. He knows what he's fucking doing. He ain't stupid. No. Nope. It is an emotional reaction, I think. It's, it's not a considered one. Because logic dictates. So if I just stop... And the worst of it is, of course, the worst of it is, doing our shit, maybe in the first week, you're looking at an hour a day for the first five, ten days, possibly. Maybe even less than that. But after that, you could do it in half an hour a day. I mean, our new 90 cubes thing coming out on May the 3rd is going to be 90 things to do over 90 days based on a 90 second video with an accompanying worksheet. And the, the limit we put on ourselves is these have got to be done. You've got to be able to do every single one of these within 30 minutes. Yeah. And the idea is, and this is obviously for, for the listener, but you know, Connor is aware of this, is when you join us, you will get 90 tasks each one half an hour or less. And at the end of the 90 days, you'll have a dramatically and profoundly different and better life and business. That's a big promise. Huge promise. But again, if people can't or won't take 30 minutes out of their day to do it, what can you do? Seriously, what can you do? And I don't believe anyone cannot get up 30 minutes earlier, go to bed 30 minutes later, spend 30 minutes less time watching the TV, I, I, I just, I'm speechless. I don't get it. I just don't, don't understand wash it. for 90 days. Just don't wash. You know, you, you'll probably I'll save yourself you what, half an hour not washing and no joking, one will want to come near you anyway. Joking aside, when I'm bulking up on my muscles, so I'm eating more, I spend more time shitting in an average day than 30 minutes. Wow. I am not one to hurry a shift. No, no, no. It's a, it's a sacred moment. Like three shifts a day, each one of at least 10 minutes. You know? I spend... I mean, imagine, you know, business owners, listen to this. Tradesmen, listen to this. Your lord and saviour, EBG, spends more time shitting than you need to spend fixing your businesses. Put it in perspective, boys and girls. In the time it takes me to squeeze out three big, long, brown, smelly ones... You could fix your business. Well, fucking hell, it was a no-brainer. You're impressed That's, with that analogy, aren't you, Connor? Yeah, I am. And I, I was just thinking how... Uh, beautiful. How I, yeah, how beautiful it is and how I take my time when I go to the toilet as well, because it's the only time anything ever touches my male G-spot. Oh, we say you reckon. <laughs> I don't think I know... I know hey, don't forget, my. I know your dad. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. I'm fucking three <laughs> steps ahead of you there. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? When you're not a parent, yeah, you maybe you never will be, but if you ever have children, the 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 sanctity of that solitude of the shit will become life changing for you. Because when you go for a shit, when you've got younger kids. Going for a shit is often the only time you get on your own. You know, you are surrounded by these small, clamouring, larval humans that just demand shit all the while. They demand your time, energy, patience, money, cooperation, help. And it's just fucking unending. And the only time, the only, only fucking time you can say, no, fuck off, is when you're in that bathroom door locked, evacuating your bowels. You will install an entire fucking library, video suite, cinematic fucking surround sound in your bathroom because it becomes your little private fucking oasis of tranquility, calm, 
and being left the fuck aloneness. Try, take well, why don't you ask your dad? He'll tell you. I, I, I believe you. Uh, and I, one of the reasons I believe you is because I already enjoy the time I spend shitting now because it's the only time that, you know, if Holly says you need to do this or you want something from me, it's like, it's not going to happen. Oh. There is a turd on the oh, way. Yeah. And yeah. no matter how much I want to help you or Holly in that moment, it's like, I'm having a shit. So it's just, I know I'm going to get 10 minutes <laughs> then <laughs> of being left alone. So I can only imagine how much, how far more glorious those moments are when you can get away from your little well, it's fucking it's wife kind of... snotting those kids. You know, you, you kind of turn to the family and you say, I'm going for a shit. It's one of those <laughs> inalienable rights that a man has not to be disturbed for the next half an hour or so. Oh, yeah. it's, 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 you can imagine in a film, you, you draw yourself up to your full height, which in my case isn't very tall, I know. But you draw yourself to your full height and you you square your shoulders and puff up your chest. You say, I'm going for a shit. Dramatic fucking music, fly to the Valkyries, that kind of thing, you know. And the door closes behind you with a solid thunk of the, of the lock, and you're gone. You are unapproachable, unreachable, unflappable. You ain't going nowhere until you decide to go. That's fucking life-changing, I'm telling you. I, um, I once, my, I, I'm going to call her my partner because I know it winds you up. My partner got herself in a bit of a tiff about something. And I was, I did the very stupid thing of bringing logic to this completely illogical tiff. Uh, it didn't really involve me. But I was like, look, you need to calm down. Here's why X, Y, and Z. Well, for a, obviously, it just was absolutely the wrong thing to do because you don't understand, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so we're having a back and forth. And I went, you know what? I'm going to go for a shit. <laughs> <It's> um, <laughs> just, just not there for six. She was like, what do you mean? I was like, I can't okay. deal with this right now. So I'm going to go have a shit. And she went, fair enough. Came back and everything was fine. <laughs> shit was the answer. Shit was the answer. Shit is often the answer. <laughs> shit was the answer. I was I'll like, tell I'm you going something else. There was no argument. When, when you get a woman who's being, shall we say, irrationally logical, as some women are, not all, not all women, some women are irrational, fractious, unreasonable all the uns you can think of that make women those creatures we love and worship. A really good way to get a woman to calm down when she's starting to get angry is to say to her, look, calm down. That works really well. And if you, if you want to really put a fine twist to it, to, to really get her to calm down, say to her, calm down, you're sounding just like your mother. Oh, I've, that I've works really that well. Mistake. I've made that mistake. That works really well. I've made that mistake. I've made that mistake. I I don't often. In fact, I I, I never lose my temper ever ever. Uh, but I can remember quite clearly the last time I did, and I wouldn't even say I lost my temper. Uh, I just lost all control for a good ten seconds. So while we, we were settling down for dinner, this was when I was living at home with with my family. And um, we, we have these quite large lights around our conservatory. Um, so I pull my chair out and I turn around because there's something there. And um, I, must, I must have nudged something by accident. And this light has come crashing down and uh, it's gone on my finger. For those watching, you can still see the blood under my nail. It really, really fucking hurt. It really, really hurt. Caught me right in that bit there. Uh, where you, your nail sort of ends. If anyone's ever digged in there, you know how much that hurts. And I'm, I've gone, oh my fucking God, like that. And my dad has just instinctively gone, well, why'd you do that to yourself? I was like, what did you fucking say? I didn't fucking do it on purpose, did I, you fat, stupid prick? And he was like, Connor. I was like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but I've never heard something so stupid in my life. Didn't do that on fucking purpose, did I? What did you do that for? Why'd you do that to yourself? Well, I didn't fucking do it on purpose, did I, you fat, stupid prick? And yeah, yeah, I apologised to, to Dad after, but I let him know uh, I meant what I said. <laughs> I didn't fucking do it on purpose. You're a fat, stupid prick. <laughs>
Oh, family name. So, because you're moved out of your old haunts now, aren't you? Completely. Yes. Excellent. How many more have they got to get rid of? Two. Two. 18 and 13 year old. Oh, 13 over there for years. Yeah. Christ. Yeah, so they've got another 10 years of kids. Um, Possibly, yeah. I mean, I left home at 19, as I recall. Um, the average uh, age for leaving home now is 28. You're fucking joking. I'm pretty sure it's 28. Art reminds me. I'm not going to say too much because you've got to identify him, but someone I used to know, um, when I was last drove through the little village I, was, I lived in in Leicester, he still lives with his fucking parents. How old? He's, my, he's a year older than me, so he's now 57. And he was one of these really fat, slovenly blokes with a greasy mop of hair on top. And you saw him still in his parish, and you just thought, pedo! Mm. You know? In the basement. Yeah, sitting there in his fucking bedroom, he's been in for the last 57 years. All fucking high tech internet stuff, all the fucking st- <laughs> streaming kiddie porn. Oh, God. You know, it's fucking true. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. It's suspicious, isn't it? Whenever you see some fucking... slow, um, long, just... greasy hair. Well, I, I don't know. And I'm, this, this is almost certainly just my prejudice, right? But I think at the time it was probably 45, so it's probably about 10 or so years ago. So you're about 47. A 47 coming up 50-year-old bloke still living at home with his parents. That, that cannot be normal, can it? It can't be. I mean, I know it's everyone's choice and it's a personal choice and all the rest of it, but it's still fucking dodgy. <laughs> yeah. And the poor parents. I, I don't know why they fucking stood for it. I wouldn't. Mm. <clears throat> I'm trying to find like, an official like statistic, to... but I can't. On what? The average age of in the UK. <laughs> average age for paedophiles. Yeah, 28 years. Okay, <laughs> now that's just fucking scary. All our kids have gone one way or the other. And 80% expect they'll never move out. Wouldn't tolerate it, just wouldn't. <laughs> just no fucking way. But okay, one how big 12, my house was? One? one in 12 kids. I'm just already saying, yeah, I'll probably never move out in my parents' gaff. Fuck off, no chance, not a chance. Oh my god, no. I mean, right now it's just me and Sarah in this fucking big farmhouse with two dogs and two cats. Imogen, Tanitha, they've all left home. Holly and Rosie and out. Holly lives on her own now. Rosie's at uni, Alf's at uni. And it's, I mean, could we come back if we had to, Dad? No, fuck off. <laughs> what a hideous thought. Uh, this is a study that was done five years ago, so it is relatively out of date, especially with everything that's been going on recently with house prices and whatnot. But um, in 2017, on average... 12% of 35-year-olds still lived at home. Well, I get it. If, if say, you're, you're married and you have some kind of life crisis, divorce, you know, shit happens. And it's nice to know you can... I mean, I, I, I was joking, really. I mean, my kids need to come back here, of course, they bloody could. Yeah. I even said you could if you had to, if you remember, during the vaccine. Yeah. Shit, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, never forget it. But, but never... Leaving home, choosing to stay tied to your parents' fucking apron strings. What? Uh, that doesn't say anything nice. That to me doesn't say anything appealing about a man at all. <laughs> no, it doesn't make me want to trust him, particularly like him, go into business with him. No, no, it says respect a lot. Him for, respect him for standing on his own two foot. All those things, they're just not there. You know, again, let's, perhaps it's just my petty prejudices. I don't know. No, not but at it, all. I think it says a lot. I think it says a lot. You'd rather fucking be coddled at home by 
presumably your mother who will still do your washing, your cooking, your cleaning. Oh, okay. We're talking very stereotypically, but I'd imagine that is if, if it's we're talking about a man that wants to stay at home, he has all of those services available to him from his own mother and he doesn't see anything wrong with it, uh, which says a lot about the person's mentality. I know. I'm, I'm really struggling to get my head around that idea, you know? I mean, I, I, I just can't. I can't even. These are the same sort of people that cry for socialism and everybody should be given money for living and everybody should be given a, a, a house for breathing. Yeah, you're not far wrong there. I mean, I don't even like being looked after. I, mean, I, I, I don't expect, I mean, I do all the cooking. Um, Sarah tends to be the one who, who does the washing and stuff, but I do the cooking. I do a fair share of the cleaning. I just just don't like being looked after. It's not anyone else's responsibility to. I'm the worst person ever if I'm ill. Because I fucking hate being looked after. I just don't like it at all. Yeah, I was always an awful patient. I was in hospital. I was fucking 12 years old. And I was telling the nurses to leave me alone and go and help someone who needed it. After <laughs> yeah, I was, I was living the same. I had, I had part of my hip cut off and replaced with metal and fake bone and i was like i'm fine leave me alone <laughs> brain ending up the eye socket i'm fine it's just the skin oh. the scrap and then i had eye anyway, surgery when i was fucking no i want to say one more thing about my eye surgery i had eye surgery <laughs> and uh, i woke up and uh, shortly after waking up from the surgery, um, they allowed my mum to come in. I was like, what are you doing here, mum? I'm perfectly fine. Leave me alone. I, I just want to sleep anyway. And she, she was like, oh, the doctors say you can't sleep. I was like, well, all right then. Um, I don't want to talk to you, though. I just want to sit here. I, I need some water. Um, and she's like, yeah, the nurse will bring you water soon. I'm like, that, that, that's great. And um, all of a sudden, I was like, wiping my face and my hands just covered in red my eye is just pouring with red liquid and my mum's fucking freaked the fuck out oh my god oh my god it wasn't blood but it looked exactly like blood just this red liquid flowing down my cheeks she went she started going doctor i need a doctor i went <laughs> mum we don't need a doctor just give me some paper towels <laughs> yeah maybe it's a bloke thing but we, we tend to we seem to be quite is a resilient the right word about stupid thing? it's, not all, it's all, completely not, stupid not all men but it's yeah. completely stupid fucking flesh wound but there's a fine balance here like we should be accepting the help and we are fucking stupid for just flat out turning it down just being stubborn old men when our lives would be a lot easier if we just said yes to that cheese toasty and staying in bed all day. I got a point. I, I, I must admit, I am enjoying my transition into being a grumpy old man. <laughs> oh, no, I fucking know it. <laughs> I, I never thought I would. I always thought I'd hanker for years, but no. I'm enjoying my transition, my, my metamorphosis into a grumpy old bastard. And I know, I, I get this feeling I'm going to be really good at it. Some benefits that come with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to enjoy the twilight of my life, I'm telling you. What are we doing in a double? fucking marketing company? We, we should just fucking start a TV show where we sit here and just chat shit about life because that's all we've done. We've spoken about business for five minutes. This has been going on for Half 40 hour. minutes now. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> all right, that was wind it, wind it up then. So, anyway... If you want to make more money, less work, less hassle, fewer headaches by attracting better clients, selling for the high prices, and having them to deliver to you from a pipeline which itself is filled hands off and on autopilot without your too much of your intervention, then go to ottpodcast.co.uk and avail yourself of our free resources. In the meantime, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands, love this fluffy bunny old man, and do not shit on your fingers. See you later. Ciao for now.